Good afternoon, folks. My name is Spencer Scruggs, and I um, am currently the uh, Membership Engagement Coordinator for the Coalition for Disability with ACPA. We are incredibly excited to have you all here on the uh, program today uh, to join us with uh, Nancy Evans. Uh, Nancy is going to uh, share uh, all her wisdom, experience, and and wonderful uh, wonderful research on uh, campus experiences of college students with disabilities. Um, she'll be sharing that with us today. So, uh, to give you a little brief introduction, um, the research roundtable series was developed um, from the coalition to give light to research that's being done on college students with disabilities and um, and on um, just disability in higher education as a whole. And uh, we were very passionate about um, highlighting um, the experiences of individuals with disabilities and uh, college students with disabilities um, within, the higher edu within higher education because they're never really, there are, there are, have been fewer uh, realms um, to share that information widely, particularly within the association. Um, uh, and so we, we really, really, really wanted to provide that opportunity. And so we're very, very excited that you have joined us and that um, you've uh, decided to engage with us today. So uh, without further ado, I'll uh, briefly introduce Nancy. So Nancy is a professor in the School of Education at Iowa State University where she previously taught in and coordinated the College Student Affairs Program. She holds an MFA from Western Illinois University in Theater, a PhD from the University of Missouri-Columbia in Counseling Psychology, an MS, an MS, excuse me, an MSED from Southern Illinois University Carbondale in Higher Education College Student per Personnel, and a BS from the State University of New York at Potsdam in Social Science. Professional positions she has held include Associate Professor of Counselor Education, Counseling Psychology, and Rehabilitation at the, at the Pennsylvania State University, Associate Professor of Counselor Education and College Student Personnel at Western Illinois University, Assistant Professor of Higher Education and Student Affairs at Indiana University, Counseling Psychologist and Assistant Professor at Bowling Green State University, Residence Counselor at Stevens College, and Assistant Dean of Students at Tarkio College. Nancy has received the following awards from ACPA College Student Educators International, the Lifetime Achievement Award, Voice of Inclusion Award, Diamond Honoree Senior Scholar, Contribution to Knowledge Award, and the Anua Coeptis Senior Professional. She's also received the Legacy of the Profession Award from NASPA, and the Research Award from the Association of Assessment and Counseling and Evaluation. Uh, and without further ado, I will hand the presentation over to Nancy, and Nancy can share with us some of her wonderful wisdom uh, on college students or campus experiences of college students with disabilities. Thanks very much, Spencer. It's a delight to be with you all today. Um, I am certainly, uh, I hope I live up to that glowing introduction. Um, Today, what I'm going to try to do uh, in, in the next 20, 20 minutes or so is um, talk with you about a bit about my research, um, a little bit about my positionality, um, how I view research, um, as well as uh, digging into uh, one particular data set uh, that I've been working with for a number of years now um, and specifically looking at uh, the first um, study that we did out of it, uh, which led to an ACPA um, uh, program, uh, very much a broad brush um, investigation of the data set. Um, and more recently, we've just submitted an article that focuses on um, differences uh, in the experiences of students with different types of disabilities. And then a little bit of preview of a study that we're currently um, doing an analysis for um, that looks at specifically at inclusion 
Um, so that's the agenda for the day. Would you move the slide, Spencer? There we go. Um, Spencer is my uh, assistant today. <laughs> Throughout my career, I have studied the impact of the college environment on marginalized student populations. Um, initially, my work looked at women. Um, next, I focused on LGBTQ students. And uh, for about the last uh, 20 years or so, I guess, that sounds like a long time, uh, I've been looking at students with disabilities. Maybe it's 15. Um, next slide. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about my positionality and privilege because I think it's very important as you look at research to understand the people doing the research. Um, I come at my research from a social justice and critical realist perspective. With regard to social justice, what that means is I'm particularly interested in uh, hierarchical distribution of power by social group membership. I examine oppression, assumptions of normality, and I strive through my research to help to create conditions that create um, equality, equity, and acceptance of difference. Uh, with regard to critical realism, um, what this means is that it's, it comes out of the work of uh, Shakespeare from England, not the, not the, uh, not the playwright, <laughs> William Shakespeare, who is a disability uh, researcher. Um, and he looks at reintegrating the physical realities of the body and the mind, along with constructive, a constructivist focus on structural and social systems. Um, my theoretical perspective is inter interactionist. Um, what we mean by this is that a student's ability to function in an environment is an interaction of the environment, the person, and the person's impairment. It's fluid uh, in that environment can be either uh, minimally disabling or very disabling. The person can be um, more willing to make change or less willing to make change. Um, they have more or less of a sense of agency. And the person's impairment uh, can be uh, minimal or profound. And it changes over time and location. So that's a lot of fluidity. Um, and my research is critical constructivist um, in that I look at um, the injustices in the world and seek to correct them. And I believe that people make sense themselves of the world around them. My research um, is always designed to inform practice. I also identify, skipped one, I identify as a white, heterosexual, spiritual, previously working class in that I was born in the working class. I now identify as upper middle class, but a lot of working class um, values and assumptions still stay in my head. Um, I'm a woman with a disability and I cannot separate myself from my research. As I'm looking at other people's perceptions, my own will interact with that. And I also believe that people have the potential for change and development. Okay, now you can turn it. Okay, so this first study, the original study, um, looked at social integration of students with disabilities. Uh, the setting was a Midwest comprehensive research university. Um, in terms of methods and participants, we used in-depth interviews um, using Seidman's methods and protocol. Um, we had 
two or three interviews per student. Um, they were all undergraduates who had been on campus at least a year, who used DRO, um, Disability Resource Office, accommodations, and who identified as having at least one of the following types of impairment, learning disability, ADHD, mental health impairment, mobility impairment, or sensory impairment. Um, we had two students from each of those impairment groups. And I should mention that I use the word impairment uh, because I see that as the internal um, uh, factor that influences what a person can and cannot do. Disability I use as an interactive factor in how the environment influences and interacts with the person's impairment. Um, the second uh, aspect of the study was focus groups. We did five focus groups, one per each impairment group. Um, there were 24 students um, in total who participated in the focus group, six in the learning disability group, seven ADHD, three uh, in mental health, um, three in mobility impairment, and five in sensory impairment. Um, we did our best to try to have even numbers. Um, that didn't work. So we took all the students that we could um, solicit or convince to uh, be part of the focus groups. Okay. The um, team members, there was an, I'll be talking about two different groups. The original group was five members. I was the faculty member. There were two doctoral students and two master's students. Um, I have listed on the on the slide our, our characteristics and what we did. Um, I'm not going to read all of that. Uh, you can look at it um, and it will be available um, to you all as a, a handout as well. Um, the next slide shows you the, the master's students. Um, I will say that all the students had uh, experience to some degree or other with both disability and with uh, qualitative research. Um, three of us had a disability of different, different types of disability and three did not, but had studied disability in classes. Okay. Here are the research questions. Um, they include, how do students with disabilities experience social engagement on the campus environment? How do students with disabilities perceive they are viewed by others on the campus in relation to social en engagement? How does the university community re respond to students with disabilities in relation to their social engagement? And how do students with disabilities respond to how they're treated in regard to social engagement? So very broad questions. Okay. Um, hang on a minute. Okay. All right. Um, overarching, overarching themes uh, that came out of this. Um, obviously, there's a lot more detail in the study, uh, but I want to give you just the highlights and things that um, should be meaningful to you. Um, first theme was that disability is not monolithic. Basically, what I mean by that is that uh, not all students are the same. Not all disabilities are the same, and even students with the same disability are not the same. Um, some of the differences that were important were whether their disability was apparent or non-apparent. Um, the age at onset um, or and or diagnosis um, tends to influence their views of themselves and their views of, of 
uh, their experiences. And we ended up with widely varied experiences, which is what led to the second study. Um, there was in the responses a normative presumption in society. Um, the assumption that the focus is on how things are done, not the end resort. So um, there is a presumption that everybody will do things the same and that, um, and that comes out of able-bodied privilege that people who are able-bodied do what's quote normal and everybody else is um, less than normal. Um, the variation in how things are done tends to be viewed as deficit and is stigmatized. And the degree of variation is often linked to the degree of stigmatization. So the more different the way that students did things, the more stigmatized it was, the less accepted they were. Um, next slide. Okay. Um, the third theme was that solutions are focused on individual response rather than in institutional change. So it was very reactive. Um, students had to ask for accommodations. Um, they were often um, only done reluctantly and for that particular student, not, um, not for students in the future. So it's very much about um, the reacting to an individual request rather than changing the institution for all students that might have that request in the future. Spontaneity is therefore removed. Students have to, if, if you want to go on a particular trip, you have to ask for the accommodation for the bus, etc. Dependence is therefore um, enforced. They have they're very they're made to be very in dependent rather than independent in what they are able to do, depending on the accommodations they receive or don't. Um, individual agency. This is the fourth theme. Individual agency occurs in response to environmental challenges. So how the students reacted to the challenges they, they um, faced in the environment um, were different. There were, we grouped that into about five different responses we saw. One was overcompensation. Um, so trying to do everything, trying to prove a point that they're just as good as anybody else. This was particularly true of learning dis disabled students um, where we saw, uh, you know, a lot of activity, um, and activity, activity to the point of, uh, it affecting their ability to get everything done. Um, secondly, we saw resistance. I'm just not going to deal with it. I'm not going to take the accommodation. I'm going to prove I can do it without um, and that usually didn't work so well for the student, um, but it saved their pride and, and their sense of being independent. Um, third was acquiescence to the accommodation process. So it was like, an, oh, well, I have to do this. I will do it. I will follow all the rules they want me to follow. I will get through it because I want to do these things. Um, Self-limitation, um, well, if it's going to take this much work, why bother? I just won't get involved. I won't do these things um, because I just don't want to go through the hassle. And then the final um, uh, way of um, addressing it was what, uh, what we labeled self-care. And that was more of a, I'm deciding not to do things because it, because of my own need to take care of myself, either 
if I if I do all these things, I'll I'll be too tired. I won't be able to to get my academic work done. Um, I will have to. Um, it, it'll create too much stress for me. Those kinds of responses. So in the self care, you saw very much the interaction of um, of the of the um, impairment with the environment. So those those were the themes that came out of this first study. Um, and we were particularly interested in looking at that first theme about um, how much variation we saw and wanted to really dive deeper into that data. So we did a second study and that will be coming up soon. There we go. Um, this was about variability in collegiate experiences by disability type. So the purpose of this particular study was to describe the, both the commonalities and differences within the university experiences of college students with varying types of disabilities. So our research questions for this study uh, were what factors influence the college experiences of students with disabilities in general? What, what were the influences? Second, how do those fi factors influence their experiences? What specifically um, do they allow or prevent a student from doing th um, things? Um, and then finally, how are those factors similar or different by disability type? Okay. We had a new research team. So my first research team, you notice, was students. They graduate. <laughs> Um, they graduate, they go away, they do different things. So, um, so the, the second team um, what is a team of um, folks that are faculty members and student affairs professionals uh, and disability resources professional. Um, three faculty members, um, myself and two others, and uh, one uh, DR professional and one student affairs professional. That particular student affairs professional was a member of the original team and he chose to come back and, and work on, um, continue to work with this data. Um, we all participated in the recoding of the data for this study, the analysis and the write-up of the submitted manuscript. We submitted it to uh, disability in higher education, and we should be hearing fairly soon about whether they're going to take it or not. So um, here are the results in table form, and let me walk you through that. Um, the, the five learning group, or five disability groups, again, impairment groups, are ADHD, learning disabilities, mental health, mobility, and sensory. Um, and the columns down are the factors that were important to that particular students in that particular group in the order of importance. So for ADHD, it was the effects of their impairment accommodations, reactions of others, and others' lack of knowledge of disability and, yeah, of, of their disability. The columns across um, give you the, um, what was most important for each of the groups and what was important for each of the groups in order. So. The first, um, first row is the most important thing. The second row is second most important thing. So that's how you make sense of the, of the table. Um, let, give me a moment to get to my notes on this one, okay?
Well, never mind. Let me do this without notes. Um, as you can see, the um, effects of impairment. Uh, no, hang on one minute. Let me start with um, the reactions of others. The reactions of others was the one uh, factor that showed up in each of the group's responses. By reaction of others, we are looking at both positive reactions and negative reactions um, to their experience, to the students themselves and what um, they're trying to do with regard to both academic experiences and um, social experiences. Um, so you can see that for um, the mobility uh, impaired students and sensory impaired students, reactions to others was the most important thing in terms of their ability to in, be engaged in college. How students, faculty, staff um, looked at them, um, interacted with them, helped them or hindered them from participation. Um, the effects of others was the next um, no, that was the one I just talked. Reaction of others. Okay, effects of impairment is the next one. Um, the effects of impairment showed up in the experiences of, um, no, accommodations is next. I'm sorry. Um, uh, accommodations is next, and it showed up for four of the five groups. It did not show up for students with mental health issues. That doesn't mean they didn't talk about it occasionally. It means it didn't make the top three for them. Um, for the others, it was second uh, for ADHD, mobility, and sensory. Uh, and it was fourth, it was uh, fourth for learning disabilities. What do we mean by that? Accommodations it could mean either having accommodations that were helpful or not being able to get accommodations or not choosing or choosing not to use accommodations. It could be either of those. Um, most students talked about the negative uh, rather than the positive. That um, particularly uh, students with ADHD talked about how difficult it was for them to convince their uh, faculty that they needed accommodations. Faculty were not willing to, to acknowledge that they had a problem that needed some assistance. I don't mean problem. That they had, uh, that they needed accommodations to be able to succeed in the way that other students did. Um, the third variable was reactions to, of, of, no, react, in, I'm sorry, effects of impairment was the third, the third um, factor. And it was, uh, it showed up for three different groups. And it was the most important for those three groups. And they all happen to be um, non-apparent groups. So students with ADHD, learning disabilities, and mental health all talked about the effects of their impairment on them and how it interfered with um, their experiences on campus, how, they, uh, how it held them back in some way um, and prevented them from doing the things that they wanted to do, um, particularly um, if they chose not to use um, accommodations or didn't receive accommodations. And then um, the fourth was others' lack of information or knowledge about disability. That was um, also three groups that indicated um, this was a concern um, they were ADHD, mental health, and sensory um, 
And they talked about how other people just didn't have a clue about what it meant to have a mental health impairment or what it meant to be deaf. Um, the, and, and the, as a result of that, those people, um, because of their lack of knowledge, did not uh, provide the kind of assistance they needed. For instance, one of the deaf students talked about how um, his professor didn't understand about captioning and thought that that would give him an unfair advantage over other students. Um, so he was unwilling to provide that. Of course, these things are illegal, but the students are generally not in a position where they want to bring a lawsuit, unfortunately. So, um, and then the final variable that came up, and it came up just for learning disabilities, students with learning disabilities, was over-involvement, extensive extracurricular involvement. Um, and that seemed to be related to proving something to, to themselves and to other people that they could do just as much and do it just as well as other students. And it also um, had to do with building up a good resume because they didn't anticipate their grades were gonna be good enough to Im impress people. So those are the brief, very brief overview of, of what we found um, from the study. Um, and it, it really um, tells us that we need to look at students with disabilities individually, that we need to look at um, different disabilities as having different impact. Uh, we cannot group people together and assume that they're going to have the same experience because they all have disabilities. They are not. Okay, so that's that study. This third study, which is in progress, we're doing the analysis, re -an the third analysis on this data set right now. And this one is um, designed to look specifically at involvement of students in activities, leadership positions, um, and, and student organizations. Um, we want to better understand factors that relate to their involvement um, and, and look at that more specifically. So the research questions on this, and this goes on to the next slide, Spencer, so you know. Uh, research questions, what types, turn it back for a minute. Go back to the next, yeah, okay. What types of involvement experiences have students with disabilities had in college? What specifically do they do? How have students with disabilities made meaning out of their involvement experiences in college? Okay. Um, what factors have encouraged students to participate in social activities, student organizations, and leadership positions? And what barriers have, presented, have prevented students from getting involved? What do students see as factors that could assist with involvement? What do they think that the university ought to do differently? And then finally, based on the last study, do variations exist among students with different types of impairments regarding their experiences and perceptions of involvement? And for sure they do, but we want to make it specific. Um, so that's what we're going to be looking at um, in this coming study and hope to have this completed probably this summer, to be honest. Um, and that'll pretty much um, take care of this data set. And I am involved um, with the same research team on a Nakuho I grant funded project looking at um, the residence life experiences of students with disabilities in small private colleges. Um, my colleagues, Kirsten Brown and Autumn Wilkie are really taking the lead on that. And I've been encouraging Spencer and Zeke to um, invite them once that study is done, because we're getting some really interesting things in that study. Thank you very much. I, I look forward to answering any questions you might have.
come on, I'm not scary. <laughs> No questions? Looks like we might be having some audio difficulty here. I can't hear anything. Okay.
Spencer, I'm not seeing anything other than the chat box, and I'm not seeing any questions. Okay. Nancy, can you hear me now? Now I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Uh, right. Sorry. Yeah. So, sorry about that, y'all. We um, had some technical difficulties, but now we're back. So, um, so uh, let's see here. So, we'll start with uh, a question from Amy King. Is it possible to access a list of the questions you used? I would like to incorporate a few into my end of the year survey for students. Um, we use different questions for different studies. I guess if you wanted to look at the whole interview protocol, I could, I could send that to you from the first study and the second, I guess. I'd probably need to check with my colleagues to make sure they're they're okay with me doing that. But if you want to send me an email with your address and your request, um, that would be helpful. Um, yeah, um, my email I should have put it on the on the uh, outline is it's Nancy J Evans all together. Um, Nancy J Evans one nine four seven at gmail dot com. Everything spelled just the way you think it's spelled. Um, so we'll move on to a question from uh, Val. Um, was did they think accommodations were better for classes versus extracurriculars, or was there a difference? Oh, good question. Um, they actually talked more about accommodations for uh, classes. Uh, I think a lot of them, when they were thinking about accommodations, were thinking about classes. Uh, the group that talked more about um, accommodations for social activities was the were the students with um, sensory disabilities who were very frustrated about you know I have to ask way ahead of time if I want an interpreter um, or you know if I want handouts for something that I can't see and you know, when they're given to me right then um, but that would be interesting to go back and look at. Um, but that's a good question. Uh, 
All right. Um, next question uh, comes from uh, <clears throat> Kirsten Brown. Um, could you say a little more about theoretical perspectives that are informing your work? <laughs> oh, come on, Kirsten. Give me a break. Um, Yes, as I said initially, what informs my work, um, particularly is a, ju a social justice approach and and uh, critical realist um, theoretical uh, or a, th a philosophical um, belief system. So the social justice approach um, to this work, um, specifically with disabilities, looks at ableism in society, um, the impact that ableism has on a particular social group in this instance, students with disabilities of various types, um, and looks at factors that, um, that influence their ability or inability to accomplish what they want to accomplish. Um, and it also um, factors in um, particularly the environmental conditions um, as well as attitudinal conditions that um, are affecting students with various types of disabilities. Um, critical realist approach uh, as I said, comes out of the work of William Shakespeare. Is that the right first name? It may not be. I'm, I'm confusing my theater background with my um, my disability work. Um, Tom Shakespeare. Sorry, it's Tom. Um, and he he argues that um, while other theoretical perspectives have either looked specifically at um, students in a medical way as, as having a medical problem and then flip or another group flips directly to environments and says it's all about the environment, um, he says it's both and let's not forget the student's impairment. Uh, in this process. So it's really very interactive, which uh, has led um, uh, led me and, and Alan Broido to develop um, what we call the interactionist perspective on disability, um, which I, I described earlier, which, which basically says that all three of those variables matter. They're very fluid in the degree to which they matter. Um, they change over time, they change with location. Um, so that's about the best I can do on theory for you, Kirsten. <laughs> um, Patricia Fleming had a really good question about how difficult is it to find students to participate? Maybe you could explain a little bit about the recruitment how process for college students with disabilities and, and yeah whatnot. sure um it was difficult um luckily uh we were well connected with the disability resource office in that two of our team members worked there um and we used their individual um, connections with students as well as uh, got permission um, to use their email list of students um, and we recruited first using the email list um, and and then secondly we went more to the individual approach of um, of these two particular team members individually asking students if they'd take part um, but we had particular trouble finding students with mental health issues that wanted to, or that were willing to participate. Um, as, as I indicated, we only ended up with three in the focus group and, and two interviews, but one of those interviews ended up, um, he would only do one interview. He wanted everything done at once, uh, which limited to some extent the quality of, of his interview data. 
Um, and they, you know, they were just very hesitant because of the stigma, because of the bad experiences they had had. And they really only did it because they trusted this particular team member. And he was the one that conducted their interviews and also their focus group. So it's tough. Um, I think that um, it, it's, and it's interesting in comparison with the current study that we're doing at small private colleges, um, where we're, we seem to be having much better luck getting students who are willing to talk to us. Um, and I don't know if that's because their experiences is, are better, and it seems to be that they are. Uh, this study that I've been talking about was at a large, large public, uh, 30,000 students. Um, and the, the Kuho study is at small privates of one to 2,000 students. Um, so I think size of institution may play a role or the quality of accommodations may play a role. Um, it, it's, um, I think it does help if you have gatekeepers, which we did have with the Aku Hawaii study, uh, the DR um, staff at all of these institutions were the ones that sent out our emails and um, and then at the bottom of, we did two phases. One is, uh, one was a survey um, and the other was um, interview. And the, we asked all the students that did the survey if they'd also be willing to talk to us. And so they had already completed the survey and kind of knew what that was going to be like, you know, what kind of questions we were interested in, that sort of thing. So that might, factor in as well of they went, oh, those questions weren't too scary. What more could they ask me that would bother me? You know, so I think part of it might have been, you know, just a little bit more familiarity with what the study was about. Um, so gatekeepers, uh, people that are, you know, willing to help you by doing some individual solicitation helps. Um, I don't know what else to, to recommend, but uh, it, is, um, it is something you really need to think about in terms of how you're going to find your folks. Um, and also, I think we also mentioned that we were people with disabilities on the team, there, there were, and that might have um, reassured a few people. So I think we may have, Time for one last question. Um, so uh, Chris Stone sends in a question. Was there any consideration or conversation regarding the experience of students in their K through 12 environment? What role yes. did they did they have uh, had what role they had in transition or transition planning? Yes. Um, we did Seidman interviews, which are life history. Um, and so we, that's another set of data we haven't really looked at. It, we looked at it with regard to the first study in the, in the broad brush study. Um, we looked at that data. Um, in the second study, we did not. We looked specifically at the college experiences. Um, it, it is another set of data that we probably could look at in this study. Um, many of them had difficult experiences in high school. Um, not all of them. <laughs> I think high school experiences did matter, uh, both positive and negative. We had, I can think of outliers on either end. Um, and in terms of transition, obviously, if their experiences did matter, um, as to what their expectations were when they came into college. Um, the one young lady who had very positive experiences in high school tended to continue to have pretty positive experiences in college. But she, 
she had been in leadership training programs and really knew a lot about disability and herself as a person with a disability um, when she got to college and was very assertive. So I think, again, both her past experiences and who she was as a person made it easier for her. Um, there were um, there were other students that had negative experiences, um, expected to have negative experiences in college and did. So a lot of it was, what do you come in with? What do you expect is going to happen? Um, yeah. Um, again, worth digging into further, Chris. <laughs> well, uh, I think with that in mind, we're going to uh, end um, the the program and whatnot. Thank you again, Nancy, for your willingness to be featured on this and, and for sharing with us a little bit about your research and um, all the great work that you and your colleagues have been doing to um, raise the voices um, and the experiences of, of college students with disabilities. Thanks very much. And if any of you would like more information or have specific questions, feel free to email me and I'll be happy to, to try to respond to those. All right, thank you all so much for joining us. And uh, we will have more information about future opportunities. Um, I also want to highlight that um, if you currently are a member of the, the coalition, we have three different leadership opportunities uh, open um, on the director board. So feel free to get in touch with one of us, um, get in touch with us through our social media accounts or whatnot to uh, learn more about that. Thank you all so much.